Hello, I'm John Allen with video here of a ride down Massachusetts Avenue in Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA. I'm riding a bicycle and I have front and rear cameras. I'm starting from the Arlington Town Line at Alewifebrook Parkway. After crossing the parkway, I merge into a bus, bike, and right turn lane. It's bumpy because of red asphalt <laughs> having been laid over the existing pavement. I'll be riding outside the bike lane here most of the time to demonstrate what is efficient and safe, but at times I do go into the bike lane to demonstrate some of the issues here. So a bike lane can run along the curb, parking and a loading zone are piled on top of a bus lane. Here, bicyclists are trapped behind a row of flex posts where motorists can turn right across their path. As I approach the next intersection, the bike lane merges out toward a general travel lane. The driver of a box truck merges out into the next lane. Passing clearance would have been very tight in the adjacent lane. The right-hand general travel lane becomes a bus lane. Once more, there are parking spaces in the bus lane. At this driveway, motorists could be turning right, hidden by parked vehicles. Pedestrian advocates got here before the bicycling advocates, and so the bike lane zigzags past a bulb out. Driveways immediately follow two loading zones. Motorists turning right past stopped vehicles would turn blindly into the bike lane. The next crosswalk is unsignalized. A waiting vehicle would hide bicyclists and pedestrians from each other. Bicyclists would either have to wait behind a bus or swerve across in front of it to return to the bike lane at this bus stop. Where the truck is blocking the street on the right and the green paint goes across is where the linear park crosses. A pedestrian push button controls a special signal phase for the linear park. More about that elsewhere. There's a forced right hook at the next intersection. That is how several bicyclists in the Boston area have died. The street is balkanized. I'm not alone in using the bus lane, although that is technically illegal. But again, I use the bike lane some of the time to illustrate issues with it and to show how to use it safely where that is possible. The floating parking here leaves only one general travel lane, but I must look behind myself to check for turning traffic at the next intersection. Next is a forced merge to a door zone bike lane. As through traffic only had the lane next to the median in the previous block, I'm able to merge left and avoid the risk of dooring. Note the white truck, we'll see it again. At the bus stop, a bicyclist in the bike lane would risk going under a bus if it pulled out. There is only moderate traffic now at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday, but thanks to the many traffic lights, I'm able to keep up at this point. A driver behind me is impatient and honks his horn. My diving into the door zone wouldn't get him anywhere any faster. He could do that by merging left to pass me and the truck ahead of me. But instead, he merges into the bike lane. I've muted the conversation I had with him. It wasn't entirely pleasant. Anyway, I'll tell you that I told him a door zone bike lane is a death trap. In Cambridge, two bicyclists have been killed when a door opened, fleeing one under a bus and the other under a truck. The driver merges left to pass me and the truck ahead of me. I merge into the bike lane in the next block. There's no parking, so there's no door zone and there's no bus in the bus stop. As I merge out, a car starts to merge into the same lane. Why did this happen? Probably because as I started merging, I was outside the field of view of the driver's right side mirror. But I avoid risk by not riding close to the vehicles in the next lane. Lesson to file away. Always something to learn. It would have been better to match speed with the vehicles in the next lane just behind one and ahead of the other where the driver could see me out the windshield. 
but above all here, too, don't ride close to the side of vehicles. In this block, there were only a couple of cars parked making a door zone, and after that, no vehicle waiting to overtake, as I could see in my mirror, and so no reason to merge into the bike lane. But now I'll show you a good reason not to. Besides being a bike lane and a bus stop piled on top of one another, it also serves as a right turn lane. And here comes a driver who wants to turn right. By turning right from that lane, the driver avoids delay for several others behind who are going straight through, and also avoids the risk of right hooking a bicyclist who might be approaching in the bike lane. The green paint in the intersection denotes a right hook conflict which only the motorist could avoid. I'd be defenseless, so I don't ride there. And also, I'd be defenseless against goring in the next block, and for several blocks afterwards. So I stay in the general travel lane. Notice I do not call it a car lane. It is a general travel lane open to bicyclists as well as motorists. No law requires me to put my life at risk by riding in the door zone. What's delaying traffic here? It's not me. I'm behind the same truck that passed me over three minutes ago. You really messed up the lights here. Anyway, it's an opportunity for me to catch my breath and take a look around. The sign on the corner says, turning vehicles yield to pedestrians. So there is turning traffic here, and once again there is a green painted conflict area, followed by a bus stop and bike lane on top of one another, a large truck extending into the bike lane, and more door zone parking. The traffic lights aren't as restricted here, and so motor traffic speed picks up. But there is a lane to my left in which it can easily overtake me. As soon as the door zone hazard ends, I do merge into the bike lane. I check my mirror that there's no driver behind me who might be turning right. Bus stop, bike lane, crosswalk, pile up. I yield to a motorist to avoid a zigzag. Are you kidding me? Vehicle stop for pedestrian would hide a bicyclist in the bike lane. Bicyclist would have to swerve in front of a stopped bus to re-enter it. The bike lane digs back out in another conflict zone. And yet another. A notorious fatal crash occurred here when a trucker made an illegal lane change. Left turns from the middle lane have been made illegal in an attempt to forestall that problem. Bicyclists have the option to stay in the bike lane and make a jug handle left turn, although it is very slow. Here is the jug handle left turn for bicyclists. Notice the car turning right ahead. Again, I avoid a right hook conflict by not riding in the bike lane. Ahead, it is obstructed by construction workers. There should have been a warning to leave the bike lane ahead of this construction project. Now there's a short stretch of bike lane without a door zone problem, but as you can see, I'm not holding anyone up. It's the traffic lights. And by staying out of the bike lane, I'm avoiding more right hook conflicts. The red light offers me an opportunity to catch my breath. Thanks to pollution control on motor vehicles, the air is way, way better than it was in the 1970s when I moved to Boston. It'll be getting better and better as more and more cars become electric. First, motoring interest prevailed and made the streets wide. Waves of pedestrian and bicycling advocacy followed, as already noted. So again here we have the zigzag and the blind conflict between pedestrians and bicyclists in the bike lane. And so I am not riding in the bike lane here. Now I'll avoid block after block of door zone bike lane and right hook conflict. Ahead on the right, behind Jersey Barriers, is outdoor seating for an eatery, a concept widely introduced during the COVID-19 pandemic. 
I avoid another right hook conflict. I merge right around a rough spot in the road surface. I do this only briefly so I don't lose my place in line and I also avoid intruding into the door zone. A driver exits a parked vehicle into the door zone. Interesting sign on the rear window of that vehicle. I would like to talk about it with the driver, but I won't have the opportunity. A runner crosses against the light, which is common practice. A bicyclist and electric scooter rider approach in the bike lane and pull ahead of waiting traffic at the intersection. If they'd arrived a little bit earlier, they could have been doored. Or if they entered the intersection when the light changed, they could have been right hooked. They now proceed resolutely in the door zone, leaving it only when necessary to avoid obstacles. Any of the car doors along here could open and fling one of these people out into the street. Motorists have no trouble merging into the next lane to pass me. Here, if the door of a truck opened, it would fling the scooter rider under a motorist's car. Maybe this motorist expects me to dive into the bike lane? I don't know. I make a wave-by signal, which you can't see in the video. Just go over there. The traffic signal turns yellow just as I reach it. Motorists stop for the red light. The bicyclist and scooter rider in the door zone run the red light. Seeing the double parked Amazon Prime truck, I check for traffic behind me and make a full lane change to the left. The door zone people merge left only far enough to get past a man getting out of his vehicle and skim along next to the side of the Amazon truck. Suppose the driver came out. They merge back in as soon as they possibly can and continue riding in the door zone. The bike lanes support the incorrect belief that all of the danger comes from behind. I try to explain the problem to them. Will it be a lost cause with these guys? You're in the door zone. Anyone opens one of those doors that flies in front of you and throws you out in front of the car in the street. You're very, very trusting. Another bus stop bike lane pileup. The electric scooter rider turns off across Waterhouse Street into the Cambridge Common. As you can see in the video, and I can see in my mirror, there is no motor traffic for a quarter mile or more back in this lane. Besides that, in urban areas, rear-end collisions are very rare. The door zone bicyclist continues in a right turn lane, which is also designated for bicyclists with a shared lane marking. He merges over to the right. That would invite a side swipe. But then back to the middle. A bike lane extends from where vehicles can turn across his line of travel. I control the center lane until I am past the conflict point. Then I merge over into the bike lane because I'd like to have a little talk with the door zone bicyclist. Really? You really think no one's ever going to open the door in front of you? No. It's Two okay. bicyclists have been killed that way in, in I'm, Cambridge. I'm, I'm close to it, but I, I keep my eyes out. You can't stop in time. I mean, door or car by my two options. You're safer being in the middle of the travel lane. He's a fit, regular bicycle user, but he's so fearful of vehicles behind him that he puts himself at risk in the door zone even when there aren't any. I use a rear view mirror. It gives me situational awareness. It helps me negotiate with drivers and it's a confidence builder. Okay, no door zone here, but drivers are expected to turn right across my path, so I check behind myself. Now I very briefly do ride in the door zone, very slowly to avoid dooring risks. Vehicles on both sides are stopped. As the light changes, I position myself to be visible to the driver of the gray car just behind me. The car passes me and we both turn right. The driver is giving me safe clearance. 
On entering Brattle Street, I negotiate with the driver behind me and merge out into the travel lane. I'm certainly keeping up with the slow traffic, and I do not want to tangle with that parked car with its left blinker on and wheels turned left. I re-enter the bike lane and pass a couple of cars where they do not have room to turn into my line of travel. Even if the one ahead did not have its right turn blinker on, I'd not pull past it as it could still turn right. The separated bikeway puts the entering cyclist in conflict with most traffic in the intersection. I decide to ride in the general travel lane, avoiding zigzags and conflicts with motorized and pedestrian cross traffic. Now, notice what's in front of me. The same contractor's truck that passed me 12 minutes ago just pulling into a parking space. The traffic lights determine travel times here, not my lane control. Thanks for watching.